Um, I'd like to begin by just noting that uh, in academic circles, we all tend to have taglines. We like to refer to ourselves as uh, psychologists or mathematicians or whatnot. Well, I play that game too. I, I refer to myself as a humanist. And I, I, I use that, I say that in order to make the point that I'm not a psychologist, uh, other than the fact that I kind of study the, the larger context of the human condition, if you will. But as a humanist, I'm interested in the interior experience of the interplay of the human and the divine. And I would say that in quoting one of the philosophers I studied in my studies, uh, Pico della Mirandola, 15th century uh, Renaissance scholar, he said that we exist in a middle space, being neither a heavenly being nor an earthly being. And in this middle space, he felt that human beings can range between the level of the lower things or the higher things. Well, I believe that we are a microcosm of that entire spectrum. But we are gifted with a freedom that enables our movement, our ability to change, to grow and develop. And I became interested in the Monroe Institute because of its process for exercising our freedom to explore the full range between the lower things and the higher things. Using the HemiSync technology, and many of you are familiar with Bob Monroe's work that Bob developed, TMI programs offer the opportunity to tune into different states of consciousness, like tuning a radio into different stations. All right. uh, that's an effect that most everybody who goes to TMI has some experience of. But what I was really interested in knowing and trying to understand and was the basis of this study was while the effect can be pretty dramatic, I have often wondered how participants have integrated their experiences into their lives. What difference has attendance at a TMI program? A difference in terms of tuning in to different levels of consciousness made in the nature of their personal relationships, their interests and accomplishments, their growth and development, if you will. So this is what the basis of the study that I've begun. And this is only the beginning of this study. There are several phases yet that I will be exploring. But this initial study started with two groups. I looked at people who have attended just simply the Gateway program, which was the first program in the series and everyone's required to go through before they can attend any advanced programs. There were approximately uh, 360 respondents in the Gateway group. Then I looked at another group called multiple program attendees. People who have attended three or more programs, and as you'll see, more than 75% of this group attended actually four or more programs. All had attended at least one program since 2000. All right? But some of the multiple program uh, participants had gateway experiences dating back into the 1970s. All right? There was an online questionnaire. There was one section demographics, psychographics, program effects, about 61 questions. And then there was an optional section looking at personality typology. Now let me just simply kind of summarize some of the independent variables that came out of this. On the demographic differences, some of the key examples here is obviously for the multiple program group, they're a little bit older. They've been going to TMI longer. All right? Their education, they have a higher percentage of people with advanced degrees. All right? They also have a length of change in social status in the meaning that they've been widowed or diverse, divorced. Those individuals have been widowed or divorced had been uh, uh, for a longer period of time. They had adjusted to that change. Right. And then income level was a little higher. So there are some of the you know, independent variables between, demographically between the two groups. On the psychographic level, there were really two key differences. I asked people, you know, uh, why did you uh, choose to attend TMI? Gave them a list of 10 different reasons. You could select any or, or none. And you could select them as many times as you wanted to. Two dimensions came out between the two groups that was uh, a statistically significant difference. One was curiosity. The multiple program attendees had a greater degree of curiosity in their reason for attending TMI. And the second one was self-knowledge, the desire to understand themselves better. These were two 
distinctions between the two groups. And then in terms of personality typology, what's really interesting about the, this group is both of them have pretty much the same typology. You know, a little bit uh, beyond norm in terms of extroversion. That was a little unexpected on my part. But their dominant function is, in, is intuition. And their auxiliary function, primary auxiliary function. So for, for most people, it was like in the 40 percentile, uh, uh, 40 percentage uh, uh, basis for what I call this dominant function of intuition. The secondary function was feeling. And then as an auxiliary f uh, function, intuition was still the highest. So on the two dominant and auxiliary uh, determinants of personality typology, intuition is the highest descriptor of the personality typologies of the people going to TMI. Now let's just take a look at the findings and go kind of jump to the bottom line. I did a fact analysis around 34 uh, program effect items, came up with four categories in which I loaded those items on, personal efficacy, life satisfaction, job satisfaction, career performance. Then we did a regression analysis looking at controlling for these variables, these differences in demographics, psychographics. And we came to a rather interesting conclusion here, is that those people attending multiple programs actually had statistically significant higher personal efficacy and life satisfaction than those who just attended Gateway. Now, what's also interesting is the R squared there. I don't believe I have enough variables to account for TMI as having much to do with that. All right? But what I can say is that TMI acts like a strange attractor of a certain kind of individual who comes through there, okay? Now, I want to go a little too fast there. I want to uh, point out some of the questions in terms of program effects and look at this correlation between gateway-only respondents and multiple program respondents. I, 34 questions looking at questions like, I have a more expansive vision of how the parts of my life relate to a whole. On every one of the 34 questions, multiple program attendees more strongly agreed with that question than with than the gateway only. And here are the ones where they're the strongest difference. All right. Tremendously, you know, uh, a measure of difference here on some of these questions. The additional questions besides these, this to give you a, a, a feel for this, I'm a more effective decision maker. I am more composed under pressure. I'm more able to listen non-defensively to criticism. I'm more productive at work. I have developed new friends. So I'm looking at aspects that would point to this question of quality of life, life satisfaction, if you will. And on every one of those questions, the people attending multiple programs had a much higher Satisfaction would strongly agree with that. Now, that's one aspect of the study. The other one, which I find even more interesting, is what I'd call the qualitative analysis. Because I asked a series of open-ended questions. And one in particular was, what's your most memorable experience? And I got back, a, 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 you know, 200 pages of written comments, single-spaced. And so I had to be, go through all that and begin to try to organize it around some set of categories. And here were four categories in which I could pretty easily put most everybody's response. All right. I'm going to look a little bit here at this personal learning and development and share that with you. Now here's a sample of responses from the Gateway Only group. And I've highlighted a couple places here we we'll pay attention to the language, because the language is key to kind of a mental functioning, the way people are structuring meaning from this experience. So I'm accepting my limitations. I'm forgiving myself. I've cried with oneself of the young time together. A meeting having cried with oneself of the young time together. Learning to trust myself, realizing how dumb I've been. 
Discovering the clown ch chakra. Realizing I'm still alive. Interesting, interesting data here. Now, let's compare that with the multiple program participants. And you can really see you know, a number of different characteristics in the language. I'm a very different person, much more whole than before. TMI helped me heal when I was very bruised. I will always be grateful. Having confidence in myself to dance with others. One part of our purpose here on Earth, or one way to look at it, is to enable God to experience the physical. In my case, hear and enjoy music. Realize that I failed to follow my guidance if I was afraid of possible consequences. Learning to love and trust myself, letting go of shame. Now, language here betrays a degree of integration, of an understanding of how their life has changed and how they are living in accordance with that change. That's one of the things that I'm taking away from this to explain why they feel more life satisfaction and greater self-efficacy. Right. Now, obviously, there's some things here that I still don't understand. And one of the things that I'm uh, proposing is that there are still questions around other variables contributing to this finding. So there's a phase two of the study yet to be done. But there's also uh, a need to get other people's perspective on these people. So I'm proposing to use a multi-rater instrument in a follow-up study with 34 of these individuals. Now, th the final comment, I take this from Richard Tarnas' work on the passion of the Western mind, and I certainly saw that happening with both groups of people, is the way in which we focus on the world, our intentions we bring to the world, the world opens up and begins to ratify that experience for us. So with that, I kind of conclude my presentation, open it up to any kind of questions, because I've covered a lot of stuff here. Um, I'm, uh, tend, I tend to be slightly suspicious of self-reportage in psychological studies. I, I don't mean to be too cynical, but isn't it possible that some of this effect is simply due to self-suggestion and self-selection? In other words, people that go through multiple programs are, for one, one example would be that they would be, uh, mm -hmm. tend to be motivated to, to, um, feel uh, that they had to change in response to spending all that money, uh, that it wasn't a, that it wasn't a, a, uh, a waste, mm -hmm. and, uh, and to justify it to a, even on a questionnaire. But of course, I assume these people were anonymous, so, so there was no ego issue there. Okay. So anyway, I think that there could be other, from other factors that caused uh, those results. Sure. And I, and I don't disagree. I, really what's coming across here is an attitude. I don't really know if they're happier, right? but you certainly get from their responses a clear indication, particularly when you do the uh, analysis, that there's statistically a, a difference. Now what explains that? That's something I, I would like to get into a deeper understanding of. Okay. So I agree. There could be other factors here. Yeah, um, my question was similar to his in terms of a self-selection effect. I guess the other question is, is that do you have any pre-data? So do we, we don't know how much gain may have occurred. No, we don't have a baseline. And this is one of the things I've told the folks at TMI. You need to start collecting data on people as they're coming in so you know something about you know, what you are trying to evaluate in terms of long-term effect. And they haven't begun to do that yet. I know in the beginning that Monroe Institute um, had all these frequencies to help people get out of their bodies. Did you even ask people about were they getting out of their bodies more? Or has the whole focus of the institute changed? No. Um, what you didn't see up there was what I call the mystical experience. And a number of, and what's really interesting here is you would think that that would be the, probably the number one area of memorable experience. And actually, it isn't. Uh, and in fact, among this group, I don't think that there's more than a handful of people that even spoke of out-of-body experience.
but they spoke of a, a wide range of what I call metanormal functioning. The experience of themselves under different uh, influences, uh, experiencing themselves transported in time, speaking with their, their, uh, their relatives outside of time, soul retrieval, a number of various uh, activities that are very much at the heart of what Monroe does. But uh, by and large, the large majority was around personal learning and development and what I'm calling belonging. Their relationship to others was more memorable than some of those experiences. That, I found that interesting. Um, I had a question about uh, the uh, two populations. Did yes. you control for the amount of meditation in the two populations? And that was one of the questions I didn't ask. Uh, oh. Is, is like, asking. what other work are you doing? All right, and that's one of the things I'm going to go into in greater detail in the, in the, in the next phase of the study. One more. Okay. We have one more. Okay. I'd just like to comment and, and ask a question. My sense is that the particular technique, the induction, uh, that you're studying could be is interchangeable with, you could make quite a list of other programs of self-development and personal change. And you would find in, in all these cases a, a moment of initiation or kicking open the door or some kind of blast off experience. And then you would find long periods of sustained development which are making exactly the kind of mature, integrated human beings uh, to come forth. And, and so what I, what I really appreciate is, is the, the joining of this technology with Tr spiritual traditions and right. many others. Right. Um, and I, I, the more data we have of, of yeah. each and every one of these, the better. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. And, and, and let me just simply add, there was another reason for why uh, uh, Skip Atwater wanted us to do this study, was also to look at why not more people were coming back. There was, seemed to be about a 36-month period of time from the initial uh, uh, finding out about Monroe until the interest began to wane. Okay. And that was one of the